Mechanics of a CPT The types of movements of the four different types of CPTs can be correlated to an elevator or escalator. The propulsion mechanisms of an aerial cable car and cable liner are almost like an escalator, while the propulsion mechanisms of an aerial tram and a funicular are almost like an elevator. The movement and mechanisms of an aerial cable car is like an escalator. The equivalency is as follows. Both have electric motors to spin the cabins or stairs where passengers are transported. The cabins going up is equivalent to the stairs going up. The cabins going down is equivalent to the stairs going down. The ART cable is equivalent to the chain of the escalator. Both have wheels to guide the cable or chains in a circulatory motion. Like the aerial cable car, the cable liner has similar characteristics and mechanisms to an escalator. The movements and mechanisms of an aerial tram is like an elevator. The elevator cabin and the counterweights are the equivalent of the two cabins of an aerial tram. The movement of the cabin and counterweight is vertical in a back and forth motion. In an aerial tram, the movement of the cabins are always along a slope in the same back and forth motion. Both are propelled by electric motors. The major difference between elevator and aerial tram is the number of stations or stops. In an elevator, there are numerous stops between the top floor and the ground floor. In an aerial tram, there are only two stops at the two end stations. An aerial tram works like an elevator. Each elevator has a counterweight equal to the weight of the elevator. The cabin moves back and forth between the topmost floor and the lowest floor. What people do not see is that the elevator cabin and counterweight are connected by a cable. The purpose of the counterweight is to save on electricity consumption. The energy required to move the people in the cabin up and down is just the force needed to pull the total weight of the people inside the cabin. People do not see this counterweight in buildings because they are hidden, but in some malls, the cabin and the counterweight are shown to fascinate shoppers as shown in this mall elevator in Cebu. The movement and mechanisms of a funicular are also like an elevator. The elevator cabin and the counterweight are the equivalent of two train sets in a funicular. The movement of the cabin and counterweight is in a vertical back and forth motion. In a funicular, it is always along a slope in the same back and forth motion. The major difference between an elevator and aerial tram is the number of passenger stops. In an elevator, there are a number of stops between the top floor and the ground floor. In an aerial tram, there are only two stops at the two end stations. Let us look at the rationale on the use of cables in a CPT. Cabins and trains can be pulled by a cylindrical steel material for propulsion. The material could either be steel rod or cable. For the same size diameter, both are equally capable of pulling the same amount of load. But the more expensive cable is used because the pulling materials need to travel along curves, circles, and loops. ART cabins are pulled by cables. From the top view, it will be seen that ART travels in straight lines. But from the side view, there is actually a slight sag. The sag is caused by the downward force of the weight of the cabins. The sag cannot be avoided, but it can be minimized. The sag has a very minimal effect on the travel distance between stations. If the sag between towers are long as in this case, the sag will be wider. The cable at this part will experience high stresses than all other areas. In this case, you will need a bigger cable for the entire system. In order to avoid using a bigger cable, an intermediate tower is for example placed here to minimize the stress of the cable. The stress at the cable between stations are made as uniform as possible by the right amount and placement of towers. This will optimize diameter size of the cable, capital, and operational costs of the ART system. Like ARTs, GRT trains such as cable liner and funicular are also pulled by cable. From the top view, unlike ART, GRTs travel horizontally along the horizontal curvatures of their tracks. From the side view, GRTs travel vertically along the vertical curvatures of their tracks.
For these aforementioned reasons, again, the steel material to pull the trains must be a cable. Let us look at the principles of counterbalancing in a CBT. The four types of CPTs are classified by the movement of its cabins or train coaches. It will be easier to understand and appreciate each type if we can associate its movements by its equivalent machines that we see every day. These two machines are an elevator and escalator. Both devices that many of us see daily rely on the principle of counterbalancing. In an elevator, because of the equal weight of the cabin and the counterweight, the energy required to transport the passengers is just the weight of the passengers inside the elevator plus friction. In an escalator, because of the equal weight of the stairs going up and the stairs going down, the energy required to transport the passengers is just the weight of the passengers riding on the stairs plus friction. The principles of counterbalancing in an ART can be best explained to be easily understood by looking at the simplest counterbalancing device we often see, a seesaw. This is an illustration to demonstrate the power of counterbalancing. You can put 10 sumo wrestlers on each side. You can move the 20 sumo wrestlers up and down with only a hand on both sides. Because of counterbalancing, the hands are actually not expending energy to move the wrestlers. The only energy expended by the hands are those only enough to overcome the frictional resistance of the hinge. If the counterbalance is removed, the 10 sumo wrestlers on the left can only be moved up and down by a crane. All CPT and ART systems take advantage of the principle of counterbalancing. This is the reason ART consumes much lesser electricity when compared to other electrically operated mass transportation systems. The frictional forces to overcome in an ART is much greater than a seesaw. The frictional forces to overcome are located in the towers and in bullwheels at the stations. The benefit of counterbalancing can further be illustrated in this drawing. There is no need to use energy or electricity to move the cabins since they counterbalance each other during travel. The electricity needed to move the passengers consists of mainly two parts. First is friction. These are located at the towers and the bull wheels at the station. Second is the differential weight of the passengers. Let us assume that there are 500 passengers inside cabins moving up and 510 passengers moving down. The only electricity needed to move is just the difference of 10 passengers. CPTs are the only type of mass transportation that can take advantage of the principles of counterbalancing. For the following part of the video, we will elaborate more on the effects of friction in mass transportation systems. Let us make a comparative analysis of the frictional forces that occur during the operation of mass transportation systems. These are details of sample forces acting on a mass transportation vehicle as it travels. The first two sets are for the BRT and LRT traveling along an inclined or flat surface respectively. Many of the viewers would be familiar with these forces as they are covered in high school physics. Where frictional forces occur, they will also be the wear and tear points of the components of the transportation systems. This will increase the cost of operation and maintenance. Let us take the BRT bus as the first example. Because the bus is heavy, there will be larger weight forces and contact surfaces between the tires and road. The tires will grind against the road at all times of travel. In the case of LRT, the steel wheels will grind against the metal tracks. Being made of metal, there is less wear and tear on the steel tires. Both BRT and LRT have similar losses in efficiency since they operate similarly. In the case of ART, there are no contact surfaces except at the towers and at the stations. The tiny grip touches the towers for only less than 3 seconds and touches the rail at the station at less than than two minutes at the station. Frictional losses and energy losses are minimal. One of the factors that determine the efficiency of a transportation system is the amount of energy required to propel the passengers that will ride in a transportation vehicle. Let us compare the energy requirements of the major types of transportation systems.
A taxi can accommodate four passengers, but the weight of the taxi is six times than that of the four passengers. You need an engine and fuel to propel both the taxi and the passengers. A BRT bus can accommodate 100 passengers, but the weight of the bus is three times than that of the 100 passengers. You need a larger engine and more fuel to propel both the bus and the passengers. An LRT train can accommodate 1,200 passengers, but the weight of the train is two times. You need 32 electric motors and lots of electricity to propel both the train and the passengers. The 32 electric motors are located under the chassis of the train. An ART cabin can accommodate only 10 passengers. The weight of the cabin is two times than that of the passengers. But this is irrelevant because of counterbalancing. You only need one big motor to overcome friction and the differential weight of the passengers. This same motor drives about 50 cabins between stations. Each cabin accommodates 10 passengers. Thus, there is a total of 500 passengers being moved around a loop. Another factor that determines the efficiency of a transportation system is the ability of a system to reduce the adverse effects of the continuous deceleration through braking and acceleration of the transport vehicle. Drivers feel these effects when comparing the mileage of their cars when driving in the city or highway. These are the city and highway mileage ratings of selected cars in the Philippines. Mileage is reduced by 58% when driving in the city. While the movement of a BRT bus and an LRT train are different from that of a car, the principles of energy losses during braking, deceleration, and acceleration are the same. When traveling between stations, a BRT or LRT from a stop position has to accelerate at a certain speed. Upon reaching this range near the arrival station, it needs to apply the brakes of the vehicle to decelerate and eventually stop at the station. This is repeated many times over during an entire day of operation. The travel distance between stations is between 300 meters to 2 kilometers. Having dedicated tracks, the train needs only to apply the brakes once in preparation to stop at the next station compared to multiple times of a car. But the train is very heavy. When a train is full of passengers, it is 240 times heavier than a car. It passes by every station at a frequency of 3 to 10 minutes. It takes a lot of electricity to propel the equivalent of 240 cars. After braking, it needs to accelerate the equivalent of 240 cars. When this is repeated so many times to compensate energy loss during braking, the amount of energy required to bring the train to the required speed can be huge. This is not a problem with ART. As the travel of cabins between stations is constant, there is no need to accelerate, brake, or decelerate. When the cabin arrives at the station, the cabin detaches. The conveyor system takes over the propulsion. When it departs the station at this end, the cabin attaches. The red circles are the tire conveyors. Each tire has a preset constant rotating speed. Each of these tire conveyors in this deceleration zone have decreasing constant speeds. This will in effect decelerate the cabin. Each of these tire conveyors in the constant speed zone have fixed rotating speeds. This will in effect provide a constant safe deboarding and boarding speed of 0.9 kph. Each of these tire conveyors in the acceleration zone have increasing constant speeds. This will, in effect, accelerate the cabin. Although the cabin is being decelerated and accelerated at the station, there is no application of brakes in the ART. In contrast, repeated application of brakes in a BRT or LRT is the main cause of energy loss, leading into higher electricity consumption. In ART, all tire conveyors shown in red circles rotate at their assigned constant speed all day. The deceleration and acceleration is achieved by lining up the tire conveyors, assigning them different constant speeds. The differences in their speeds is the one that either decelerate or accelerate the cabin. 
The only time ART applies acceleration of cabins from full stop is during opening times. And the only time there is a need to apply brakes or decelerate to full stop is during closing times. Another time is when there is an emergency, when the system needs to be stopped. ART is indeed a brilliant application of engineering principles. This is a bar chart comparison of electricity consumption of different types of mass transportation. From an apple-to-apple -apple comparison, the consumption is measured in kilowatt per hour per passenger. Expectedly, the cable car consumes the least amount of electricity by a very wide margin. To appreciate even more the low electricity consumption of an ART, we compare its electricity consumption of a common household item. Many of us use every day a hair dryer. ART consumes as little as 0.1 kilowatt per hour to transport one rider over a distance of one kilometer. This is equivalent to the amount of energy a hair dryer uses in five minutes.